Uh, we are recording. So if you want to get some swears out now, go ahead. Um, by the way, I just got a little disclaimer, just to let everybody know. Um, it is the rise of the machines next door to my building. They are building a, a huge condo complex. So if you do hear some background noises, now I've kind of timed it when I do this podcast so that these guys are on their lunch break. So I've kind of timed it that way. So it, it kind of works out. Plus I have a train station behind me too. So I got lots of noise and crazy neighbors. That being said, also I'm a little off my kilter today. Little energy is a little low, discombobulated. And we're going to get into why that is. And it's been fantastic. But I tell you, this soul realignment thing that you did with me on, was it Wednesday now? Geez, I've lost my mind here. Um, I'm still feeling the effects of it. I am like all over the place. So for those who are listening and wondering what the heck a soul realignment is, can you just tell them, you know, what it is and what it involves? Sure. Yeah. So I go into, I train to channel the Akashic Records. And the Akashic Records simply is the internet for our souls. So it stores every choice we've ever made throughout all our lifetimes. Um, when we are created as a soul, we have a blueprint. So we have a certain a certain code that we follow and as we go through lifetimes we make all kinds of choices not always positive towards keeping that blueprint together so um so what i do is i'm able to go in the records and uncover the blocks the things that have come up those negative choices and then we explore those and see how they're repeating for you in this lifetime so um, th those things will keep repeating for you until they're cleared so we have the ability through this work to actually clear those blocks for you so that you can sort of, it's like starting fresh. It's like bringing you back to your original blueprint so that you can now move forward and make more positive choices. Yeah. I mean, that's, that has been so amazing so far. I mean, it's so hard to, to, to put of a, see, I can't even speak right now. It's like, um, <laughs> it, it's so hard to put an idea behind it because you have to experience it. Um, I mean, I, there's so many things going on with me right now it's kind of hard. I guess the word is the best way to articulate what I'm feeling because there's so many different things and so many different levels that we're clearing and I'm so sensitive to energy and energy work. So I know subtle things are happening. I know major things are happening. My body's fighting me right now. There's a whole bunch of stuff going on. So it's, it's absolutely amazing. So one of the things you talked about is the Akashic records is something is now, have you always been able to do read the Akashic records or was this part of your training when you uh, decided to become a soul realignment uh, practitioner? Yeah, I was trained through um, Andrea Hess's work and she designed all of this program to make it very practical. And that's what I love about it. It's, it's you go in and you ask specific questions. I'm trained. I actually went through sort of a, a mind melding, I guess, if you will. And I just have learned to channel them through, it's, it's essentially you're channeling through your higher self. So you're asking your higher self these questions. And the more I do it, my intuition builds. So I actually can, now I know the answers before, and I use a dousing rod to ask questions. And I actually can now intuit the answers before I get them. But it's a, just a, con a physical confirmation for my work. Okay. So it's just, again, it's just practice and routine and developing it. And that's one of the things I love about people like yourself is that, you know, you can do this. Like there's a lot of people out there. So if they wanted to learn stuff, to learn to, you know, either explore their psychic abilities or intuition, stuff like that. It just, it takes practice and gets, and it's trusting the information that you're getting to as well. And that's what, you know, it's interesting you talk about dousing. I just had a gentleman on here who was a douser and that's what he uses. He uses his dousing rods and his pendulums to confirm you know, what he's already getting the messages that he gets. So is it yes or is it no? And then just build that trust. And then like he says, like, if I'm really out of whack, I'll use it. But you just develop that sense of uh, attunement. You just kind of know already. So part of that training, how long was the training that you did for that? Is, a, is it a, a year course? Is it eight weeks, I'm 10 weeks? I'm still doing it. <laughs> But the initial training to do the soul realignment, I probably spent a, a few months doing a number of um, a number of like recorded videos and training and on online um, 
coaching calls. But what we do is we actually were trained so I can read for myself. But when you start the course, you ask five people to be your test clients and they, you go through each section of the training and you go back and you do the work for each of those five people. And then by the end of the course, say it's, I think it was maybe four months, I'm able then to do a full reading for those people. And then I read for myself. So it's really, really interesting how, how, how it's designed so that you don't get overloaded with information. You're doing practical. You know how we talked about learn experience and then yes. express. So yeah, so that's, that was brilliant how the training went. Cause I just felt like I knew what I was doing by the end of it. Yeah. And that's the, I think that's one of the important things about having courses and things like that is, is building the confidence. That was one of the things that I had to learn that the hard way, you know, when I was doing all my energy work and again, I didn't have practical experience and just poor training, just going to the wrong people. And, you know, once you develop that practicality and you need that, you know, confirmation thing. And that's what I do with my clients now is again, that confirmation, keep working with them, keep working with them. So they build up that foundation. So it's like second nature. You just, okay, go to work, bang, 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 here you go. So as far as the overall process, kind of walk us through what you do. Let's say, for example, we'll take me a bit. We won't get into details because I don't want all my junk out there, guys. But uh, <laughs> we will we will discuss some things. You know, I want to keep it. Uh, I want to keep some of my shit to myself. But <laughs> what is the what is the process of how you do it? So you kind of, I guess, you needed my my birth date and my full actual full birth name, right? Is that correct? Yeah, your full birth name, and then if if you know for primarily women, if they have a different birth name than their current name, that just allows me to access the records. So, so it gets, it gets um, more specific. So it's like my book. Like it's, it's like, a, book, it's my record. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So I take that information and then I actually energetically, it's not a trance, you know, but if you want to picture it like that, I actually request to go into the fifth dimension where the Akashic records are. So I'm in the third dimension. So I just, you know, I close my eyes and I say, please take me from the third dimension. I actually picture myself going on an elevator, which is kind of cool and going up to the fifth dimension. And then into this, I have this image of this beautiful, huge library that I go into and I actually go into and, and access the records there. And then I use the dousing rod to make sure I'm in your record. And then I just start asking the questions, you know, what, what is your, what are your soul characteristics and what is your, what is your energy? And I get that, all that information. And then what, what blocks we have some standard blocks that we ask is, is this showing up? Is this showing up? And then I, I just get all the information. Like, what are like the standard blocks for most people? What are you seeing the most? I know from my, I think if I can remember, I have my notes here, but um, you might be a little more fresh on it than I am. Um, blocks was my heart was the main thing, wasn't it? I think it was my heart. Let me just, sorry for the noise on my um, favorite. You areas. had a, what we call, um, like a golden web scar in your, um, your fifth chakra. So that was very interesting because, um, okay. we have all of our chakras can get torn over time. Like there's just like a, like a block or some kind of trauma that happened. So at, at one time you had something that was blocking your fifth chakra or your throat chakra but because it's showing up as a scar it means at that time that we pinpointed you had done something to launch yourself and get past that and repair that that tear oh, okay so that was really interesting yeah now i think another one was i know definitely i think it was the other one was my heart because i seem to come up a lot throughout the reading yeah uh, you had um Yes, definitely. We had some some heart issues in that um, you were closing down in your heart chakra. You had a, um, a thought form of craving in your fourth chakra, which meant that you were feeling like you wanted to open up more in your heart and open up more to loving yourself, to loving others. Yeah. So that was really, really key for you, I think, when we talked yeah. about that. Yeah. And it's it is so powerful. I, you know, it's interesting enough. I, I mean, I always knew I had something like that. I, I, people have been telling me for years, you know, a lot of my relationships, like you just said, you're just so close down. You're just like this. I had one girl and this is interesting. She, she says, like, you're just so close up. You're like a robot. Like there's no, there's no opening. Like there's just no energy there. And it's interesting that and I, it, it wasn't like till years since I started doing my work that I actually understood what she kind of meant. And it's like, it's interesting. I know that my heart has always been closed off for a long, long time. And there was that craving. And interestingly enough, this morning, before we, we get into that, so I do a meditation. 
And lo and behold, one of those lifetimes that we talked about where my heart was kind of, again, impeded, I started getting visual images, not like in like very profound, but just very subtle images that kind of, kind of bled through. And it was like, holy shit, this is crazy. But then the emotion and the feelings, my Lord, I <laughs> thought I was going to lose my shit. Like, honestly, it was so oh. profound, so feeling. And it, for the longest time, I couldn't ever figure out what that emotion was. That it was like this unescapable loneliness and sadness. And I've always had that as a child and I can never figure out, I mean, I've had a lot of crazy shit happen to me as a kid and, you know, and life issues, but there was that other thing. It's like, now it's kind of like, maybe that's where it's come from. And it was just so profound and it had that. And I was, I just, again, just trying to sit with it and trying to feel it, see how it was feeling. And it was a very, very profound and I could feel it, you know, my body shifting and I could feel it in my body. Like it's just, it's like, it's been stuck there for so long. It's just tightening down. It's just tightening down. But, you know, parts of it are starting up. And I noticed my heart is starting to slowly open up. It's just, it's not like fully blossoming yet, but I notice it's just a little bit. But the rest of the areas, like in my lower body, it's still kind of like stuck in, the, in that area. Well, and if you think about when that would have happened to you, even in a past lifetime, imagine, you know, how long that's been there. So some people, you know, think, oh, well, I didn't, I didn't make that transformation. I, I didn't change yet. Well, it takes time. I've had people come back to me after a few months later and say, oh, I didn't realize that I, I feel totally different about this particular thing now. I didn't, I didn't realize and may not associate it back to my work. And frankly, I'm just happy to know that they're feeling better. I don't care if they want to give credit to the work or not, but, you know, and it's you, it's you're, you're doing work. I'm, I'm pretty much just guiding you through it and showing you, trying to highlight those things and bring them into your conscious mind to say, there is a reason why you're going through those things. There is a reason why your heart is blocked. It, you need to understand that and don't, you know, and forgive yourself for that. It's not your fault. It's just the way things happen for you. And now you can clear that and move on. Yeah. I mean, that's so profound. So if anybody's listening to this and you're struggling with, you know, life and things like that, you know, there are sometimes there is a, a, I guess, a larger layer to us. There's multiple layers to us and that we're not, we're not, we don't understand. We're just, you know, we're just developing an understanding that now, especially working with the Akashic Records, past lives, karma, you know, um, attachments, all these different things. And I've always had an understanding of it, you know, a, a brief understanding. And I had a firm believer on it. And I'm a big uh, fan of Edgar Casey's work for people who are listening on to my stuff. So he talked a lot of it. He brought a lot of that information up to the foreground too. So as I studied his work, it's like, yeah, that makes sense. But I've never experienced that type of connection in that type of uh, of that information, uh, how you basically you structured it and how it allowed me to kind of just bring it to the surface. It's like, because now I can I kind of have access to it. And then if it comes up, now I can recognize it and kind of sit with it and work through that emotion and those, those memories. And it's very, very profound. Great. Yeah. So I want to ask- just begun. I, <laughs> You've only just begun to clear. No. <laughs> yeah. Sing, sing, sister, sing, please. I'll yeah. sing a little bit. <laughs> yeah, that's okay. That's our theater background. We'll, we'll just get into our singing there. Yes, yeah, so it'll be like singing show tunes. Um, that was a past life of mine. I was a, a singer. No, I don't think I was. Was I? Did you, you, did you check the records? Maybe. on the, we'll As a possibility. Out. Now, this is something interesting that came up to me. All right. So I've had uh, past life readings before on you know who I was and things like that. And there's a curiosity to me, and it's maybe you can help clarify about the soul. Sure. Now, as far as I understand, now I could be way off. Um, again, I don't know everything, but from my understanding, the soul basically is basically starts out whole, and then it splits into kind of the male and female energies of that. And we're always looking to develop that wholeness. And we always call like that soulmate, we're looking for our soulmate, that other part, the feminine aspect of it. So if the soul, if my Michael, my soul is I'm right now, I'm in the male part of my soul, but my female part of my soul is not actually on this earth plane. Is it possible that they are now in another lifetime or another plane of existence experiencing something? Well, 
That's really, that's not my understanding of it. My understanding of it is, is you're created as a soul and you will choose to incarnate either as a male or a female in okay. certain lifetimes, because we do have actually um, a question that we ask, are you monosold? Are you monosold? Are you in the one soul for in this lifetime, because there are there are as um, instances of people that soul shift that have other souls that take over their bodies. I mean, there's a whole there's a whole other side of this, right? Okay. Um, but in your case, you're mono soul. You are whole in your soul in this lifetime. That's my understanding. There will be different. Obviously, there are different um, aspects of this and different people that that will say you know, have different theories on this, but my understanding is you are one soul in this lifetime and you have incarnated as male in this as, lifetime. as male. So the, the soul itself is whole. And then I just choose, okay, I'm going to be a man this time. And then the last, I guess two lifetime ago, I was a female. Uh, was it, No, six lifetimes ago. Sorry. I was, no, I was a man in two lifetimes, six. I was the female in that past life. Yes. And that's, and that was really interesting too, is, is because the whole theme and one of the things uh, you picked up that I was actually in a nun, uh, I was a nun at that time. And I've been a priest before too. Somebody told me I was a priest in another lifetime too. Really? So there's, it's kind of like this theme. It's like, wow, how many times have I been in a nunnery or a priest? And it's like, man, this is like so bizarre, but it's, I find it. I find this stuff so absolutely fascinating. Like, I mean, I, we, this podcast might be like four hours. Like we may just go into <laughs> Well, in your your one of your birth cards is is the Hierophant, isn't it? And that's spiritual and religious and rules and that kind of stuff. So that's your essence, maybe. Yeah, you know, it's it's interesting. Uh, like when you uh, gave me those, like uh, sent me those birth cards, like it was like, yeah, duh. Like it was just, <laughs> it was just, it was so funny. I was like listening. I was like watching. Oh, sorry, just uh, reading the 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 description of it, and I find it's like, man, this is really interesting. Like. Like, yeah, this, this is perfect. Like, these are the perfect cards. This is me. Like, this makes total sense. And you just basically line the deck and just pull one. Is that how it works? Like, you just basically use your intuition? No, your birth cards, your actual birth cards, I uh, get from your birth date. Oh, okay. Yeah. So those are your unique birth cards. Unless okay. somebody else has the exact birth date with, you know, month, day, year. But that's where the birth cards go. No, I didn't. No, I won't take credit for that. <laughs> okay, I thought maybe you just did some more woo woo and you kind of got hooked up and you're just like, okay, these are the cards and you got connected. <laughs> no, I, I'll do card tricks later if you want. All right, well, they'll be in a, they'll be on the other podcast, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, so one of the things I want to talk about because I I just find there's just so many little areas here that I want to talk about. Um, there's like the God Spark that was interesting to me because I've never heard that term before. Okay. Um, Negative astral travel was another thing we talked about in my thing. We got to talk about that. That's really fantastic. Uh, we'll talk about that. And what was the other couple of things I was going to talk about? Oh yeah. Negative thought forms and independent thought forms, those two as well. But let's kind of go back to the God spark. So what is a God spark? Cause when I first heard, it, I was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> so what is a God spark? So that is your connection to um, universal force, divine energy, whatever you want to call it. Uh, but you can envision it as like an umbilical cord, like we're all connected energetically to divine source energy. So we want to make sure that that God spark, would, and, and it's just a, a term that we use in this modality. Other people may use a different term. So, it, okay. you know, but to, technically it's the actual um, energy that animates us in our third dimension. It allows us to move. It allows our body to have energy. So it's really important that we are lined up so that we can achieve and get the most of that energy that we, that we can to okay. experience the best life that we can. So that could be either damaged or blocked or healing or not healing. So kind of walk us through like, what are some of the things that you've seen in people through your, uh, through your readings through with these people? Like, what are some of the like, I mean, we talked a little briefly about, you know, the scarring with myself, but what do you see in general with other uh, people that you've done readings for? Well, I'll just um, address to you that there's, there's typically there's, we all have the one God spark and then many of us have a secondary God spark. And that just means um, that a certain chakra is a bit more opened up, or you may have had a spiritual awakening or a spiritual, some kind of burst of, of energy that you have more 
more capability in that chakra than maybe someone else might. So okay. you have a secondary God spark in your, in your sixth chakra, your third eye. So that means that your, your intuition is, is, has that ability, whether you use it or not, is completely up to you, but it's available to you. And that's the point of that. So mostly what I see is either the God spark is damaged or it's not. And typically it's damaged, um, you know, it could be from a previous lifetime or it could be from a current lifetime. So something traumatic happened to you to shut you off from your divine force energy. So it mean, doesn't mean that you, you pass away or anything. It just means that you don't have the energy. You don't have the energy that you could, could have from the universe. Okay. So that being said, so I had, it was in the six. Now you said I had a primary one too, as well. Was that the throat? No, your primary God spark is just your entire being is okay. connected to the universe. And then if you have a secondary, it just means that you have one of your, say one of your chakras is just turned on and glowing a lot more than, than the other ones. Yeah. So with my sixth chakra, was it, was it open or was it closed? I can't remember what it was. Well, they what were both, they were both damaged. Both so, damaged. and that was from an earlier life experience that we talked about that you, was a traumatic, you know, something Experience. that you said kind of you shut down, you disconnected. Disconnected. And okay. And that was in this particular lifetime. Was that correct? Was that? Yeah. Yes, I believe it was. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it was interesting too. Like you touched on, it was like, it's so eerily um, accurate when you tapped in specific date, specific times in my life, like the perfect, like the ages. Um, it was like, was it 23, well, 23 32, yes. 32 and 43? Like those are certain things. Like I just like, it kind of blew me away and it's like, oh my God. And it, it's funny because those particular times in my life, I'd never really kind of thought about until you kind of brought it to the surface, right. you know, and those particular, because it was very specific. It was like 23, but this, this is that year. And, yeah. you know, it was interesting as you do the work, you kind of go through this process your brain starts to kind of think about it and then subconsciously you're trying to pull up any memories and things like that. And I think that's part of the process of bringing it to the surface to bring more awareness to what was happening. Is that kind of the subtle idea kind of behind a little bit of this work? Oh, definitely. And I think when things are happening to us, and I know I've had times in my life that I would rather not revisit or think about, but the thing is you don't, <laughs> you don't acknowledge and you don't understand them so that you can let them go. So they just stick in you, they stick with you and you kind of move on. And it's like you're, I, I mean, I liken it to when I went through depression, it's like, it's like you're, you're, you know, walking in sludge, like you're trying to walk, but you can't, it's just, you're just slowed down by carrying it. It's essentially it's baggage. I mean, to, to make it in a, a layman's term, it's like, oh. you're just carrying a lot of baggage and you need to release it and let it go. So, um, I, I find this fascinating and, and a lot because when I was doing the work and training in it, um, you feel doubt, right? Cause I'm getting these actual ages and I'm like, Oh, what if they say, oh, nothing. And, and people have said, I don't remember anything. And actually, I found out that they actually had soul memory issues, too, which caused them to forget. So but they would go, they would sit with it for a few days and then come back to me and go, oh, oh my God, I forgot all about that. This is what's, what's happening. And I'm, I'm like, oh, that's so exciting. I, but get that's, that, I get that all the time during my readings. Like it's called, yeah. we call it psychic amnesia, especially during <laughs> mediumship. Um, so many times, especially when you're doing public events and you're saying, hey, I'm going to these, this section over here, I'm talking to this person, I'm giving ideas and like that. And the kind of, the one person puts their hand up, like, I think it's me. So they stand up and you're just like, I'm fire. And you're just giving all yeah. the information. You're like, I mean, I'm right on. And they're going like, nope, 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 <laughs> nope. Nope. And, and you know, it. like you, like, I mean, it just because when spirit, when I work with spirit, it's really interesting. They will hammer me until I get it. Like they just, they'll keep going. They'll keep going until they get it. And it's like, I have to kind of say, okay, enough's enough. They're not picking it up. And then always, not always, but for those people who have psychic amnesia. Yeah. For those who do have it, it's like after we get done the event and they come to me, oh my God, that was my aunt. And, oh my, you know, I can't believe you're so accurate. I, you know, like just have this whole thing because they're almost in shock that, you know, they were picked, like their loved ones came through and they wanted to talk to them. They, they sometimes they're, they just can't rationalize that, that, you know, that they're still loved by these people that come over. But it's, it is funny. Like you do kind of get that 
that amnesia. It's like, yeah, no. But, but it's um, interestingly, and you probably had, you know, in your training or just in your own experience is, is, you know, when I took the training, it was like, never doubt, don't doubt yourself. Don't think yeah. that you're wrong. Just always assume that you are getting accurate information because what happens is a lot of people in, in this work, they'll go back and ask again and they'll go back and ask again. So if you keep asking for a different answer, you will get a different answer. So yeah. don't mess with the process. Just take the answer you get. And then when you talk to people and I'm, I'm still, like I even said to you the other day, I'm still excited when someone says, Oh my God, that makes total sense. <laughs> Really? I know it's, it confirm confirm. I from my teacher was she always said confirmation's gold. Oh. Confirmation is absolutely gold because you know we we all want to be helpful, like we all want to be a, of a service, right? And of course, we're we our human side gets in our way. And of course, we have doubts, and because the I mean these gifts are like a natural gift that we've always had, but we just forgotten about. And once you start developing, it's like a second nature. Like we're, de we're basically designed to be able to do these certain things, whether it's reading the Akashic records, mediumship, psychic abilities, all that good stuff. We all have the abilities just in different ways. And um, it's really interesting how you talked about that. It, it is about confirmation, confirmation. And yeah, I, the one other thing she, I always remember, give what you get. So as soon as you get something, that's what you give. Like don't second guess it. Like it may not make sense to you, but yeah. it does make sense to somebody else. Yeah. And, and sometimes was, you're putting the pieces together with someone. You're like, you're making a puzzle. So I'll give a bit of information and they'll give, and then we sort of try to work it out. So it's, it's a discussion, which I like about this work too, because it's very interactive. You're talking, you're not just giving information. I'm, I'm working together. With, yeah. It's not like you got a, like a computer program that you type in somebody's name in and kind of going, Oh, by the way, this is what's going on. And you get a printout and then it's like, here's your printout, you know, mm -hmm. There's $500 later. Thank you very much. You know. Well, and I like that there's continuity because I'm the type of person and I actually have um, another reading, which indicates you're like your manifesting blueprint. Like I have all these different readings that I can do with the Patrick records, which is really totally cool and fun. But it's something that I learned about myself because I'm very different from my teacher and I will be very different from everybody. And, and she even said right at the beginning, I don't want a bunch of me's running around. I want you to take this information and make it yours. And that's very much me in everything I do. I like to be different. I like to do things differently. And I, I like to see clients on an ongoing basis. I don't forget like I have a really good memory. So I will go back to people and say, how, oh, by the way, how's that? And how's this? And they're like, what? <laughs> so <laughs> like, yeah, no, I want to, I genuinely want to know. I just, I'm interested. <laughs> you know, and, you know, it really shows. Um, like you just have this very, very loving energy, like very caring, nurturing energy and it comes off and it's that passion that comes off it. Um, and I know myself because I'm, you know, very much, you know, in tune with energy, but for people who are listening to this, uh, Marilyn, your energy is so comforting. This is one of the things when you're doing this work, you got to kind of feel safe about it because, you know, this is part of your healing journey and you just have that very lovely, light, beautiful energy that allows people to, to kind of open up. And it's just, you can see that passion that you get. Like, it is funny because like, I just get giggly. I, I go from extremes. I go like, I feel like kind of like shit, but then we start talking, then I get giggly again. <laughs> you know, I go from between because it's just your very light energy. It's really, really uh, refreshing. Oh, and, uh, so another thing I wanted to talk to you about too, as well, it was really interesting. Negative astral travel. Yeah. Now I've been told that I am very good at astral travel. I don't usually remember that I'm astral traveling. Um, I wish I did, but this is something that came up in the reading. And if you can just kind of touch on what negative astral travel is for somebody's listening. So let's just say for, somebody's listening in that kind of want to, Hey, I want to have a reading and you kind of go, Hey, this is a negative astral travel. And is this, is this a common occurrence for people? Yes. Yes. Really? Okay. It actually so, yeah. is, does come up quite a lot, which, you know, it honestly doesn't surprise me because a lot of people, a lot of their pain and suffering comes from sleep issues and you learn more. And I've done some reading on sleep and there are sleep clinics and there's all these things that people go to, to get better sleep, because that's where we get our energy. That's we all astral travel. We all leave our bodies energetically and go into the different realms 
to process. So between the third and fourth dimension into our minds, we will process the day's uh, events. So what happened in the day, we're processing, we're processing, we might be dreaming. And some people say, you know, your dreams, a lot of times your dreams are very jumbled. And that's because it's just a whole bunch of stuff getting processed and worked down and released or whatever. So yep. you don't understand your dreams. That's totally okay. You just let, you just let a whole bunch of stuff go. Um, and then between the fourth and fifth dimension, you are look going into your higher self, you're connecting into the universe and you're connecting into this divine source energy. So if you are, if, if it's called negative astral travel, it just means that you're not completing your course. You're not doing all of what you need to do. You're just, you're kind of just slamming back into your third dimension and you, that's why you feel exhausted because you just aren't making that full rotation or whatever we want to call it, or it's incomplete. That's what we just call it. It's incomplete. You're not finishing what you need to do. And okay. it doesn't have anything to do with how long you sleep or how, you know, it's, it's more of just a sense of your mind and what's going on there. Something has happened to you that has caused you to interrupt that flow. That flow, you're just not trusting it. You know, it's interesting when you talk about uh, just kind of slamming back. So many times I will feel like I've been slammed back into my body and I'm like, I'm yeah. up and it's like, what? The you wake up. Just with that? Yeah. You just like, just suddenly it's like that three o'clock in the morning. That. <laughs> yeah, exactly. On the train. Yeah. And there were times where I'll, I'll have like these body convulsions or just weird things happen to in my body. And it's just like the most bizarre stuff and I never could understand it. But then it's just like, as we talk about astral travel and more, I researched about it. It's just, my body's just kind of slamming in or it's, it's trying to fight its way back in. And it's just, there's just a lot of different things. And I was like, wait a minute, my body's actually leaving. Like my soul leaves my higher self kind of gets connected, but then it's like, it slams back. But then it's like, Oh, what, what'd you do? What'd you do? I got to go back out. And then it's like, you kind of get discombobulated. And it's interesting when you talked about the sleep patterns, I haven't, well, I think it started at 32. Like I literally haven't had a good sleep since 32. Well, it's like 20 years, <laughs> you know, 20 years. Of aged either. So, well, you know, it is, it's good makeup and lighting. That's what it was. That's <laughs> Oh, I've aged. I, I mean, I'm starting to feel like in my fifties now. So uh -oh. my part, I mean, part of me still thinks I'm young. Some still thinks I'm 25, but my body kind of goes, yeah, no, no. You're, you're just you're, a pup. You're just a you're pup, only, yeah. You're only 50, jeez. I oh, know. Oh, to, eh? to be 50 again. Oh, yeah. What are you now, like in your 60s? <laughs> uh, no, but 57 this year. Come on, really? Yeah. Hold on. Hold on <laughs> it's the, I was born under Venus, so Is I'm going to be young until I'm 90. Uh, you know what it is? Uh, you know, uh, part of that, and it's like probably because you're so hooked up to the uh, travel, the records and stuff like that. So I'm going to slow everything right down. I'm going to slow everything right down. I'm going to slow down time. I'm going to spend a little more time up there where time doesn't exist. So you don't age. So right. That's, your, that's it, what uh, it is. I, that's uh, what it is. That's your secret. You and know? good makeup and lighting. Good makeup. And, that's what it always is. That's the good thing that saved me during my television career. It's good makeup and lighting. <laughs> there were, actually, there's funny. I got a little funny story, but speaking of that, there, there was a few times when um, I have been on air and stuff like that and had these makeup uh, artists come in. And they would put so much makeup on me. I would look in the mirror and I wouldn't even recognize myself. Oh I'm going, my God. like, who the hell is this dude? Like, it's just like plastic Ken doll here. <laughs> it just, it just kind of like, hmm. And, uh, and you used know, to do makeup for funeral homes or something. <laughs> Sorry, what was this? Maybe they were used to do makeup for funeral homes and they were a little packing it along a little too. Thick. Maybe that, I mean, I don't know what it was, but it was like, it's like, okay, I'm usually just a powder guy and that's it. You know, it's like, but anyways, that's a, that's a whole nother conversation. We're talking about yeah. negative thought forms. Now we're talking about TV and makeup. <laughs> well, you know, there's a lot of negative thought forms around your body and your physical appearance. So there you go. <laughs> yeah. So this is something that really touched on me and now, understanding about thought forms. So what is, because we, uh, we discussed them. I'm going to check my notes again here. Okay. I don't, I have some amnesia sometimes too as well. And it's because people keep telling me because I'm psychic. That's what I'm using. Oh. That's my excuse. So the more psychic you come, the more uh, your memory is not as, as efficient. But you were talking about negative thought forms um, and then the independent thought form. So what's the difference between like a negative thought form? Obviously that's just, okay, let's just maybe just kind of go back because I'm all over the place. Sorry guys. Um, 
So let's just discuss what is a negative thought form or what, or what is a thought form? So a thought form is just something that you subscribe to. It's, it's something that you create, either you create for yourself or someone may create about you. So someone might say, oh, Michael, he's, you know, if it's a negative thought form, oh, Michael, he's, he's always anxious. He's always anxious. He's always anxious. And then you, you start to, you feel that from other people and you take that on and then that becomes connected to you. So it becomes a, a negative thought form that you have accepted and that will stay in your, in your being. Um, if you create it for yourself, say we use the term anxiety, um, you say, oh, I'm so anxious. I'm so, I'm always so anxious. Oh, I have, I, I have anxiety disorder. I'm always so anxious. Then that just becomes embedded in you. You believe it because you've thought it over and over and over again. And it, became, it becomes a negative thought form. It's not necessarily true. It's just what you, what you believe. So um, it's just, is it just the energy that we're creating? Cause again, it's like our thoughts create our reality. So we're creating something. It's kind of like, it's not really physically, like you can't touch it, but it's energetically. We're creating this, this form object, this energy from these emotions or thoughts and feelings. And it's kind of being lumped up. If you kind of think about it, it's like, you ever seen those, you know, cartoons where they have a cloud, that bubble over top of their head. And they have all the, you know, that thinking. Well, I think that's kind of how I'd best describe it. And they kind of get stuck in there and it just stays with you. And then it slowly kind of feeds you. It's kind of feeds you once in a while. It's like, hey, you need some ang anxiousness? Oh, how about some worry? How about a little bit of anger? Oh, that's a good one. We'll just throw that in. So it all depends on what's going on. And they kind of get attached to your energy field. Is that correct? Is that kind of? Absolutely. I, I went to a great seminar and he kept saying, you know what? You say anxiety, you're just, you're just, ordering you're ordering in you know at the great cafe in the sky and they say you want anxiety i'll give you anxiety <laughs> so you just have to watch what you're thinking you just have to control your thoughts and sometimes with this work um those that say that anxiety that's stuck in your record and you're having trouble getting past it so we need to actually convince our ego through through the homework that we don't have that anymore that we need to, that's gone i'm i am getting rid of that. And I'm going yeah. to move on with a different thought. Okay. So what is the difference between like an uh, independent thought form? And does that come from somebody else that I just kind yeah. of brushed upon, you know, I'm walking down the hall and it's like, it's just like catching the cold. It's like, you just pick it up uh, and it just gets stuck to your energy field. Is that how it works? Yeah. Yeah. So an independent thought form could be something um, like believing in the tooth fairy, for instance. So um, it may not be necessarily true. And for the kids out there, yeah, it is. But, um, but a lot of people just subscribe to it. And over time, it just builds and builds and builds. And I mean, I, I don't want to re reference too much about what's happening in the USA, but there's, there are some, you can sort of see how a thought form can grow and grow and grow. And people, you know, there are political beliefs and religious beliefs based on thought forms that aren't necessarily true, but people just believe them, believe them, believe them. So you can get, like you say, you can brush against it. You can be around a lot of people that have, have this thought form and you just start, you adopt and it just becomes yours and it, it will give off an energy for you that is negative. Yeah. So that being said, um, then it eventually just kind of goes into the collective unconsciousness as the thought form, as more people have this thought form, as it builds, it creates more energy. So then it becomes into the collective unconsciousness and just kind of gets there. And it takes, you know, lots of people to kind of undo that. And kind of move forward on it. Is that how would you would yeah. see? Well, it? and I think you, you almost have to do it one by one. Like you, you have to do it yourself. You have to step away from that thought form um, and remove yourself from it. And it, it's it, as we can see around the world, it's very difficult to do because a lot of people get tied up in these. Even the Hatfields and McCoys. I mean, <laughs> what are we yeah. fighting about? You know, hundreds of years later, why are we fighting? And people are like, oh, I don't know. We're just supposed to fight. We're supposed to be. It's, this is supposed to be happening and, and it's just not true. Okay. So how do we clear that? Now, um, of course, I'm always going to recommend people to come see you and get clearing, of course, because you're awesome. Um, but let's say, for example, they couldn't get to you or stuff like that. How would they, you know, first of all, recognize they ha had a thought form attached to them and maybe how can they clear it? Is there any kind of like things that they can do to kind of shield themselves, protect themselves from this crap? Yeah, I mean, I would say if you recognize that you have a negative thought form, I think that you, um, if you do things like meditation, or if you do things like 
um, cleansing, forest cleansing, or even heavy salt baths, like just something where you can meditate and sit with it and say, I, I want to release this. I am not, you know, if you're having an anxiety attack and you need something right away, then you maybe just need to find what calms you. If it's some music or if it's lighting a candle and focusing on the candle and just saying, this anxiety, I am releasing this anxiety, please, you know, and release it, just surrender it to the divine and say, I need to release this, please show me how to do this. Like yeah. there's all kinds of signs that we get from the universe that we miss because we're just not, it's not it's sort of like we're asleep or not, we're just not awake or alert. So if you just even just say, please make me open, open me to receive the signs from the universe and, and you'll be surprised. I will. Yeah, you'll be definitely surprised and see that, you know, I mean, because I know I fade in and out between that, you know, there's times where I'm like, oh, I'm all connected. Then there's times, I mean, I couldn't read a newspaper. Like I just so like, it basically slammed me right in the face and right in front of me. And I'm like, what? Like this is, it's like you ask for a sign and it's like, well, I don't see a sign. No, what are you talking about? And it's like right there, you know, so know. many times. Oh my gosh. And part of it too is I think it's just cutting yourself some slack. Like, as yeah. people say, oh, I can't meditate. We've had many discussions about that. And, and I said, you know what? If I sit for 20 minutes and all I do is think about what I have to do when I'm finished meditating, that's all, that's all that I'm going to do. It's fine. Just, just give yourself a break and say, I'm going to do the best I can do today. And that's fine. I'll start again tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> you know, again tomorrow. Yeah. Like, I mean, that's the great thing about the next day is like, you just, you, it's like a restart. You hit that restart button. Mm -hmm. You wake up and say, I'm going to do it, you know, restart again. It's almost like a, like a 12 step program, you know, just for today. You just kind of like, you know, I'm just going to work on today and that's it. Like, you know, don't worry about tomorrow. The past is gone. The future's not started. So I just got to work up, focus on today. Um, another interesting thing too, as well, which is service that you offer is clearing your living spaces. But it's mm -hmm. not so clear. You probably do businesses too, as well. Do you do businesses? I can. As long as you're financially responsible for the space, I can clear it. So that was another interesting thing too, because, um, I'm not a big fan of my building, never have been, but it's interesting, you know, the energy, I've, I do feel the shift in my, in my apartment, which, you know, which I've just slowly settled, but I mean, I've got so many things going on between all the stuff that's being shifted and move around and everything else that I feel in my personal, but I'm in my space too, as well. And we talked about, you talked about portals, like openings and portals and stuff like that. Now, was it myself that I unintentionally opened a portal or was it already previously existing? And then how do these things kind of get opened up in our living spaces? In the living spaces, um, they're just energetic openings. And typically it's because if there's a lot of activity and a lot of motion, a lot of energy coming in and out of your space, these, that will just allow these portals to open. And then you have like a space like it's Swiss cheese. Like it just allows negative energies to come and go, souls to come and go that are earthbound, that are just looking. And they're just all being attracted to your energy. So if you're all fired up and you're, say you're in a, a family and you're squabbling and there's a lot of activity going on, that will just attract negative energy to just come into your space. So if you're protected and those portals are closed down, it can't, you, you can't have them. They can't come in anymore. Okay. So it's basically, I mean, it all depends on what's going on. So it's basically you just, it's kind of like, because you have so much energy, it just kind of opens this, this, this kind of gateway. Right. And it's because we're in these subtle areas of energy and it just basically opens up. And then we've, you kind of like, okay. And everybody's kind of like, Ooh, that's an opening. Let's go down there and see what's happening. <laughs> let's, let's, let's check out these people. They're fighting. Oh, they're angry. Oh, I love anger. Let's hang out with these. Uh, you know, is that how it kind of works? <laughs> yeah, that's a good yeah. visual. I like that. <laughs> yeah, you can use that if you want. Even to describe Flying it to around. Face. Yeah, they're kind of looking down. They're kind of looking out. It's like, hey, I like this spot. Yeah, this one's well, and That gives energy to that. So if you're, if you're anger and you're, you know, like you say, flying around looking for some anger, you want to get some energy. So you're going to go and attach yourselves to more anger so that that gives you more energy, right? So we're all looking for, and everybody's looking for energy. So even negative energies are looking for energy. Yeah, they're trying to feed off that. So, and then and conversely, if that happens, you develop a thought form, which then it basically feeds off that negative energy so it's kind of like a really bad cycle like i was like oh, holy shit <laughs> so i guess bottom line is make sure you check your emotions and your thoughts is that a, is that a good advice 
Absolutely. Yeah. And if you feel like you leave your house, like I've actually had people say, I feel really good at work. And then I come home and I just tank. I don't know what's going on. It's like, it's not you. Sometimes it's your space. You've, you've created those, those feelings and energies in your space. And then your space can't get rid of those on its own, right? But you can maybe release some of them on your own. And then, but your space is still hanging with it. It's heavy in the air. So clearing your space is a brilliant idea. Yeah. Now, can you do that with like smudging and stuff like that too, as well? Crystals, smudging, any stuff like that? Does that help at all? Yes, 100%. Um, but it does it temporarily. And I think what, um, you know, and people say, you know, you can, you, and I do that. I smudge, I do the all the crystals, I do all of that as well, um, just to maintain the energy in my home. And you can definitely do that temporarily. And I have had people, um, you know, request that maybe a, a soul that's hanging around or a spirit to, to please leave. And that will happen temporarily. I find this work is more permanent. It's more, I actually go in, I identify what's there and I actually can request it right in the records to clear that out. To clear that out. Yeah, because I think you said I had like five in my, my apartment. I think you it was had, five. Yes. I had a, had a few. That's <laughs> like, what? <laughs> it kind of get me weirded out because, I, you know, honestly, because I, the time frame I, in this place, I mean, I've had a kind of roller coaster of emotion. So I'm not really surprised at it. It's just, but I, I'm so aware that it's like, I want to make sure that it's a close kind of my safe space and I smudge and make sure I clear some of that, but it's still there. And it's like, that makes sense. And I have a feeling it's in my bedroom because mm -hmm. that's where I, I struggle to have, like I, if I'm having sleep issues or stuff like that, I don't sleep in my bedroom. I'm always out on my couch. You know, I kind of move I've away from I've heard that, that from a number of people who won't sleep in the room because they have sleep problems. Isn't that interesting? Yeah, it's yeah. funny. Yeah. yeah. Is it? So, or are you just kind of like, yeah, that makes sense. No, I just, I just find it interesting that other people have said the exact thing. And, and because yeah. you can, like, I've done that too. When I've had insomnia and I, I'm an expert on insomnia. Um, I go, and I just watch TV until I naturally fall asleep sitting up or wherever it is. Because you just feel uncomfortable because you lay in your bed and you think, I'm supposed to be sleeping, but I can't sleep. Or something's in here that's bugging me. So what do I do? So... Yeah. You know, and it's time. interesting enough, I find myself getting up more earlier now than I used mm -hmm. to. It's just mm -hmm. like, cause I just, I can't sleep. And it's like, ah, and then I look at the clock and I'm like, oh, it's five o'clock. Jeez. <laughs> well, then you I get just, the most of the day. That's the best time of the day. Yeah. I mean, I still mull around, do shit, you know, do the first couple of hours until I get motivated. And so I have my cup of coffee and then it kind of kicks in. Then I'm like, okay, now it's time to work. Let's kind of get to and the nine o'clock at night. You're ready to crash. <laughs> oh. It's five. Yeah, basically. Sometimes I'll, I'll, you know, because of COVID, I don't actually have to be anywhere. I'll, I'll take little naps and I love those naps. Like they're not always the best because my mind's still kind of just rushing, but my body kind of goes, yeah, let's just have a, like a 30 minute nap. Just kind of lie on the floor, have a little nap. I, I call it my meditation, but it's more of a nap. <laughs> That's right. it's, it's napping. Napping's good. I love napping. Napping's amazing. Yeah. Napping. Yeah. Well, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. You know, one of the things I heard, uh, that Albert Einstein used to do was basically take naps in the afternoon. And that's how he developed his, his intuition where he got a lot of his good information from. Like yeah. he would just take a nap, you go out for a walk or something like that and kind of do like, well, he wouldn't call it meditating, um, but he would go for a little nap and then he would just allow his body to relax. And that's where he got all his beautiful epiphanies for all these great ideas. So. Oh, I get great hits when I meditate. I just have to remember them because sometimes I'll, I'll remember some, something will come up from, I don't know why I thought of that. And it's like, oh, I have to send this card to somebody or I have to, you know, and I just forgotten. And then, I, but I'm like, then I get anxious sometimes when I'm meditating and say, I got to remember that. I got to remember that. <laughs> so, <laughs> I need a recorder to speak. <laughs> there, there you go. You start channeling. You'll just actually just start to be, you'd be on a channel now. It'd just be like, you know, this is the information being recorded. So I need to talk to such and such. You know, you, could, you know what you could do? It just do it to the records and just sell it tel uh, send it telepathically. Oh, that's a good idea. All See? right. There you go. We got a whole Let new modality know. coming yeah, here. That's right. That's another thing that I'd be like, oh my God, I was just sleeping and then I had this beautiful dream. And it's like, yeah, that was the information I was sending you through the records. <laughs> Your clients will know the any difference, but you just be sending it to the records, right? It's like, okay, here, here's a new system. It's like a new postal system. <laughs> Oh, Michael. Oh, I know. <laughs>
Yeah, you were, you, when you decided to do this podcast, you're probably going, why did I do this with this guy? <laughs> Oh no, I'm always happy to talk. Uh, well, that's good. <laughs> happy to you see know, other humans. <laughs> uh, you know, there's there are days where I can't talk at all, and uh, you know, I was I I was actually thinking about you know rescheduling this because I was feeling like so crap. I like, thought of I, that actually. You were probably thinking that when I got that message because I was like, oh, I wonder if I'm going to hear from Michael that he's too discombobulated to do this today. Yeah, so. I mean, there is there should be a little bit of a warning label with that. Um, <laughs> You're probably the most energetically sensitive person that I've done because I, I've had people say they're shifting and stuff, but not to the degree that you have told me, which is yeah. really a gift for me because that's amazing. Yeah, I'm, I'm like a, like you said, I'm the fixer, you know, so I like to like to fix things, but I like to fix myself. Um, and I'm, one of the things that I found, I found out about myself is that willingness to help others with that. Like I've so many times I've helped health practitioners, like just because I got so many shit going on. I'm just like a smorgasbord of stuff for them to figure out and fix, right? And I have a willingness to kind of help them out. Like I I had this actual, uh, who I just actually had on my podcast, we talk about that. And he says, if it wasn't for you, Michael, I wouldn't understand half the shit I learned in acupuncture school. <laughs> really? Yeah, because I had- a test subject for I, I I have been a test subject for so many years uh, for a lot of my friends. Um, who are practitioners in one way or another. And it's like, oh my God, like my chiropractor, it's actually funny. She laughs because she goes, I'm going to take you to my school because they won't understand what the hell's going on with you. Like I, she goes, every time I say, I've known this woman for years. Like I've actually worked with her at the clinic, but you know, and every time I go in there, she says, you always got something new. What's going on here? And it's, it's, she's like, she, she, she leaves kind of like frustrated because she knows, oh, here's Michael like this. And she goes, if my students... <laughs> learned half the stuff I learned from you. They would be amazing chiropractors. She says, I got to take you into my school one day. And I said, oh, great. Yeah. So I could stand around in a classroom and you can poke, poke at me and got to go, look at this guy. You got to donate your everything to science, I think. I, I'm doing that now, just doing it living. I'm a, I'm a living donor. Like they say. I'm a living donor. Oh my Lord. Yeah. I'm like, the, I'm like a case, case subject for everybody. Anyways, that being said, my dear, you know, we're almost out of time. Oh my gosh. It flew. It, I mean, it, we have so really, much more to talk about. We have so much more to do. <laughs> yes. Well, I mean, you have so much work to do. Um, and all I have to say is that I'm absolutely so grateful that you uh, did this soul realignment on me. Um, I know it's going to profound more changes with me and it's going to open my heart up to so many more greater things and my abilities. Um, I'm so happy to Karen. Thank you, Karen. Uh, just a little shout out to her for recommending Marilyn um, in your gifts. And if you guys are listening out there and you really want to, you know, add another part of healing to your, to your repertoire, if you want to kind of get into the depths of your soul, as I like to call it, and get to get some real healing done, get some, some insight to what's happening in your life, um, please, please, please contact Marilyn. That being said, Marilyn, where can they find you? Where can they find you on the World Wide Web? All that good stuff. They can find me at lifeguidecoaching.ca. And okay. uh, my email address is mvplifeguide at gmail.com. So I'm happy to hear from, from anybody. I I'm, can do this worldwide. I do it all remotely. So I'm happy to, uh, I'm happy and I'm open to whoever needs my help. Perfect. Um, absolutely amazing work guys. Um, I'm just a little out of it right now, but you know what? I'm, I know in a couple of weeks after, I, cause I can feel my homework getting starting to kick into as well. And again, that's another thing we'll talk about, but, um, profound work. Absolutely amazing. I it's, it's transformable, uh, transformable. <laughs> Transformers. You know, you. yes. Um, yeah, it's very transforming. Um, it's, it's amazing. It's super healing. Um, Marilyn, thank you so much. Thank you, Michael. So All great right. to meet you. Well, okay. thank you. Um, so this has been the Metaphysical Mentor Podcast with Michael Philpott. Thank you so much for joining me and goodbye for now.